So uh, let's go over gambler's ruin problem. Uh, so the, this is a classic problem with uh, lots of applications in uh, uh, various types of uh, scenarios. Uh, so in the very basic problem, uh, there are two players, A and B. They play against each other. A has, uh, to start with, A has, uh, A's wealth or is, uh, let's say, lower A. And similarly, B has dollar B with him. Uh, so the basic game is you toss a coin with, uh, let's say, <coughs> Uh, P is in favor of, uh, so when the head occurs, A wins. Uh, so A will win uh, each game with the probability P. And uh, if it is tail, B wins. So B would win uh, with the probability Q. So the problem is, uh, so A, B keeps playing. And what is the probability that either A or B uh, is ultimately ruined? Uh, so what we need is the probability of uh, ruin. Let's say for A. So to start with, uh, so this is a classic problem. So we, we <coughs> I'm going to define an event uh, Xn to be Uh, A is ruined uh, eventually or ultimately uh, given that uh, his current wealth is uh, is dollar n. Okay, so this is somewhere in between. So the, also I'm going to define, uh, so at some point A has uh, N dollars in his pocket and they keep, uh, A of course keeps playing against B. And uh, so we, we, we can define PN to be the probability of uh, Xn. Of course, uh, according to this, what we are interested in is uh, the uh, probability of A. In fact, I'm going to use uh, uppercase here. This is Pn. So what is the probability that A will be ultimately ruined given that his current wealth is A? Uh, so to make uh, further progress, let me also define an event H that is uh, A wins the next game. So of course, when they play the next game, there are only two possibilities, either A wins or A loses. So Xn, you can also write it as Xn intersection with uh, H union H bar. This is true for any two events, because uh, any events, because the, uh, H and H bar forms a partition, so these are mutually exclusive. So their union is the whole set whole set intersection with Xn, there is no change. But of course, on the other hand, you can expand this as Xn H union Xn H bar. And again, notice that these two are mutually exclusive. So <coughs> here we can write uh, pro Pn, which is uh, probability of Xn, is of course the probability on the right side. But this being mutually exclusive, the probability of the union is the sum of the probabilities. And then we can also use, so this is probability of X and H, which I'm going to write using the conditional probability like this. So this is X and given H bar, P H bar. So notice that this whole thing is probability of X and intersection with H. A intersection, uh, A, probability of AB is probability of A given B multiplied by PB. But on the other hand, so notice that this we, this is going to be Xn plus 1 because uh, after playing the next game, A has 1. So the state has the st status of this is Xn plus 1. So this we can write it as Pn plus 1 according to the definition. Remember, Pn is a P of Xn. So this is Pn plus 1. This is lowercase p. 
uh, plus this is if you lose it you lose one dollar so you go back to the uh, the capital becomes n minus one so this is same as xn minus one st st stage or status so this is p of n minus one q so we have a we need to solve for pn so to make a further progress let me multiply by p plus q is of course one then if I bring up all the terms together, this is Pn plus 1 minus Pn equal to Q multiplied by uh, Pn minus uh, Pn minus 1. Or if I bring this, uh, so this gives us Pn plus 1 minus Pn equal to Q over P to the power multiplied by Pn minus uh, Pn minus 1. So notice that you can iterate this, so you, this will become Q over P to the power N uh, P1 minus P0. Uh, but uh, P0, P0, of course, we can physically see that P0 is what is the probability of A getting ruined if his wealth is zero. Then, of course, A is ruined. So this is an initial condition. P0 will be 1. Similarly, remember, A has a dollar $A and B has dollar $B. So if they keep playing and ultimately, if at, if they, at any point, A has dollar $A plus B, then there is no more game. So the, there is no way to get ruined. Or these two are the initial conditions to start with. So I'm going to replace this by 1. And uh, uh, so if I, if I rewrite this, So let me start with this expression on the top here. Uh, so I have uh, Pn plus 1 minus Pn equal to Q over P to the power N multiplied by P1 minus 1. So to simplify this uh, further, let me, uh, because I don't want to use the initial condition. Uh, so of course, this is uh, any n. So I can, let me re uh, redo this with the k. So this is true for any k. Uh, so this is, of course, So notice that <coughs> when k equal to n, this becomes pn plus 1 minus pn. So you get the minus pn. Then the next one, pn plus 1, will keep uh, uh, subtracting. So the minus terms will cancel with the plus terms in this iteration. And uh, you get uh, this relation. The last term is going to be pa plus b minus pa plus b minus 1. But for this, I'm going to substitute from here. So this is going to be summation <coughs> q over p to the power k, uh, p1 minus 1, k from n through a plus b minus 1. So this uh, p1 minus 1, q over p to the power n is out, comes out. What remains is uh, q over p to the power k minus n. So if I, if I define k minus n to be a new variable m, uh, so this is here k minus n. This is k minus n uh, goes from 0, etc. So I'm just going to define this to be m. m goes from 0, and here also minus n. So this will be a plus b minus n minus 1. But this, of course, we can easily sum it, sum it up. But notice that, on the other hand, this becomes, this is 0. So we get Pn. So there's a minus sign. So I'm going to flip this. So this becomes 1 minus P1 multiplied by Q over P to the power N. 
then this is 1 minus q over p to the power a plus b minus n over 1 minus q over p, uh, this summation. So let me absorb this term inside. So I get 1 minus p1 multiplied by q over p to the power n minus q over p to the power a plus b over 1 minus q over p. So we are almost there, except that I want to get rid of this. So the easiest way is use the another the initial condition one more time. So we can put n equal to 0, so p, p0, which is 1, from this relation. From here, it becomes 1 minus p1 multiplied by, remember, n is 0, so 1 minus uh, q over p to the power a plus b over 1 minus uh, q over p. So let me call this expression 1. Uh, this is expression 2. If you divide 1 divided by 2, we get an expression for pn. So from here, we get pn. What it, this is what we are looking for. So I'm going to divide this by this. So this is pn by 1. I'm going to divide this divided by this. So notice that 1 minus p1 will cancel. The denominator will go away. So you will get q over p to the power n minus <coughs> q over p to the power a plus b over, over this. So that's going to be 1 minus q over p to the power a plus b. This is true for any n, so I'm going to substitute here now n equal to a. So let me do it here. So we get uh, p a. So this is the probability of uh, ruin for a is going to be from here substitute n equal to a uh, so that's going to be q over p to the power a minus q over p to the power a plus b or 1 minus q over p to the power a plus b. So we can simplify this a little. Uh, so this is PA, of course. So notice that if you pull out Q over P to the power A plus B outside, this goes outside, it's going to flip over here as P over Q to the power A plus B. Uh, this will, uh, this will, P over Q to the power A plus, a plus B will cancel part of it with this, with, with this and you'll get uh, p over q to the power b. And if I, uh, <coughs> if I flip the minus sign on both the places, this will come out to be So this is another way to look at this. So this is the uh, this is the answer to this problem. So what it says is if you if you have two players with a, with uh, uh, whose respective wealths are a and b, small a, small b, and you keep playing against each other, then the probability that a will ultimately lose all his wealth is given by this expression. So this is exactly what happens uh, in a casino. So you can think of a, the small a as your wealth. And uh, of course, b is uh, your opponent. Your opponent, if you are playing against the house, then it's essentially going to be what, uh, of course, you say, if it depends on your greed, because if you say b is what I want to walk out with, 
then it doesn't matter. The casino may be a billion dollars worth. So you walk in with hundred dollars and you say B is what you want to acquire. So it's maybe hundred, two hundred, whatever. So that's going to give you the, depending on what you are agreed or interest is, you can assign a value to B and compute the probability. So <coughs> maybe a couple of minor observations before we move on. So notice that if, uh, so generally you never get a favorable game. Always you have to assume that P is, uh, P over Q is less than one, right? Your opponent, especially this is the case or always in a casino. So you can see if P over Q is less than one, if B is larger and larger, this quantity goes to zero, this quantity goes to zero. Uh, that means uh, uh, P, A, P A goes to one as uh, B increases. So if you say, if you get more and more greedy saying that I want to, uh, I'm going to sit there and play till I get B dollars from the opponent. And if B is larger and larger, this whole quantity, which is your ruin, uh, becomes uh, practically certain. So if you're, if things are uh, against you, it's not a good, it's not a good idea to be too greedy. Let's also look at the other, in the rare cases where P is, <coughs> P is, uh, so this is of course the case when P is less than Q. If P is greater than Q, then of course P over Q is uh, greater than one. Then you can see that this expression So we could uh, get some insight from here. Uh, the, these two are, remember, these two are exactly the same expression. So the, if you pull out Q over P outside, then you get one minus Q over P to the power B, or one minus Q over P to the power A plus B. This is less than Q over P to the power A. So remember, Q, of course, in this case, uh, P over Q is greater than one, or Q over P is uh, less than one. So if you, are, if you are a skillful player, here this is, you are a skillful player, right? Or odds are in your favor. And if you are wealthy, then you, Q over P is less than one, and you can drive this to zero. That means, uh, your success is uh, pretty uh, assured. And there are actually a lot more implications. So another thing you could do is you could also plot this. Uh, let's say you plot B here. So this is what you, uh, especially when you play against an opponent, B doesn't have to be his world. B could be what you want to grab from him, what you want to, so in a, in a stock market case, this could be your return, what you expect. And this could be your investment. And PA is of course going to be your risk. And all this will depend on what type of stock or portfolio uh, you are going to play with. But generally the curves will go like this. The larger the return, the risk is going to be higher. So this is going to be your risk, which is the probability of ruin. So depending on, you say your appetite for risk is only 20%, and then for your capital, you could see what sort of returns you could get. Or if you say, I'm willing to take more risk, you could, so this should, the return that you expect should be never based on a hunch, it should be based on your appetite for the risk you are willing to take. So of course, with this, this is all non-linear. So playing with $100 and playing with $100 billion is a different game. So you will have to plot these things and see what are the, uh, best, uh, uh, what are the best strategies and so on. So this is something you could also use in, and in fact, uh, all sorts of fund managers use this for their uh, portfolio rearrangement and when to get in, when to get out, etc. Thank you.